What's up? So I wanted to make a quick little video about why I think deadlifts are probably one of the most overlooked lifts for throwers. And I think the reason why is because a lot of sports like people and stuff have been coming on saying like, you know, the deadlift doesn't really have a transfer to athletics and, and throwing. I'm more going to talk for throwing because I'm a thrower. Um, and I don't see where they're coming from, honestly. I've researched this myself. And all I see are benefits. All right. So, one, what does the deadlift do? One, it gives you a stronger lower back, stronger glutes, stronger hammies. And a stronger core. Um, and I mean, if you're doing it pretty heavy, a stronger grip. Uh, upper, it honestly works almost your entire body in some way. But mainly your lower back, glutes, and hammies. Alright? So, where in that is that not a transfer to athletics? Because the way I see it, especially for throwers... Every thrower uses their low back, their glutes, and their hammies. Um, all right. <laughs> and d it makes you more, s and having stronger of that will cause you, theoretically, and from what I've seen, to have a stronger squat. Because, guess what? Your squat, you use your lower back, you use your back, your glutes, and your hammies. All right. So, and your hips. So the deadlift, in my opinion, is a very good exercise. Now, what I think a lot of these coaches are coming from, I'm not naming any names, is because if you lift too heavy and you start arching back and stuff, and then you, you lift a little too slow because everyone just wants to deadlift heavy, then I can get where they're coming from because... The whole point for throwing, for lifting, you want to lift as heavy as possible, as fast as possible. So you don't want to really lift the failure very much. All right. If you see any, a lot of elite throwers, a lot of them don't really have one rep maxes. Like a lot of them have like three rep maxes, but a lot of them usually don't actually go even close to their max. All right. They never go close to failure because they don't need to because we're not power lifters. All right. The whole point is to move weight fast because when we're throwing, we are throwing either a shot put, discus, javelin, or hammer, or hammer, which is a weight as fast and as powerfully as possible. All right. So another reason why I think the deadlift is is overlooked is because it can cause it's really People think that the injury to, to benefit ratio isn't good. And what I mean by that is if you're, you know, if you deadlift, really, it's really easy to get hurt on the deadlift, which I totally agree with. So I'm going to say this right now. If you are deadlifting pretty heavy, wear a belt. All right. Nobody. Can, if someone comes up to be like, oh, you're wearing straps and a belt, you're a little wussy. First of all, if you don't have back problems. It will cause you not to have back problems. And two, you're not a you're not a power lifter. You this is not your sport. All right, use straps on stuff like that. All right, no nobody's gonna be like, oh, it doesn't count. And if they do, then they're dumb. All right, because you're not an Olympic weightlifter. All right, <laughs> okay, it's not your sport. Nobody like, if anybody knows anything about sports, they don't care. In fact, using straps will probably be better for you. Using straps and belt because you'll be in the move even faster and you won't have to worry about your grip. Because your deadlift, the most limiting factor in deadlift is your grip. Alright? So, wearing straps and a belt will make you lift faster, which will make you throw further. Because you'll be doing heavier weight faster. You know? It makes sense. Alright? So, speaking on the injury part, yeah, like... You know, like, I don't think you should go insanely heavy. I think you should program a deadlift just as you would a squat. You know, like, don't go to the point of failure or not even that close. Like, honestly, 
Um, yeah, I mean, I don't see why people, like, a lot of athletic coaches just won't do deadlifts, all right? A lot of throwers do deadlifts, whether hex bar, and I know hex bar had different levers and all that, or barbell de or bar barbell deadlifts, all right? So, a lot of them do that. Daniel Stahl, probably one of the best discus throwers of all time, is known for doing deadlifts, all right? But when you notice, if you ever see him do deadlifts, Yes, I know it's like 300 or 400 plus kilos because, you know, he's Daniel Stahl. He's doing them for like five reps fast, all right? And he never looks like he's going to fail at any point, all right? And that's how you should deadlift. You shouldn't deadlift like you're a strong man, all right? <laughs> like if you're shaking at the legs and like, like doing all that, then that there's no point in doing that for sports, all right? So, I think deadlifts are a really good exercise, especially for throwing, because they strengthen your hips and the hinge, and especially for um, hammer throw, well, for all the, uh, all, all the throwing events. You need a strong back, all right? And you need a strong core, and you need strong glutes, and you need strong hammies. So, why just purposely just throw out a lift, just because... You don't see the benefit in it, even though it's known throughout history that the deadlift is a really good exercise for building those st that stuff. Another reason why you should do the deadlift is also because if you just squat all the time, one, it's boring. Two, that just puts a bunch of pressure on your upper back and your spine and really causes a bunch of central nervous system um, fatigue. So I'm not saying don't squat. I mean... That's probably the most important lift for a thrower is the back squat, uh, just counting the Olympic lifts. But adding the deadlift, caught one, um, makes variety in your programming in your lifting programming. Two, people just like deadlifting. Um, I've rarely ran into someone that doesn't like deadlifting. Um, and. It just, like, gives you a mental break from squatting all the time. Uh, every block. So, every lifting block. So, you know, you always want variety in your training. Because if you just do the same thing for years and years and years and years, one, your body's just going to get used to it. And you will stop making progress. And you'll you stop making plateau. you start having a training plateau. Um, and two... It'll just be mentally fatiguing because you'll just go to gym and be like, oh, I guess I'm just going to do the same thing for the 10th year in a row. You know, and that's exhausting. So, yeah. That's basically my thoughts on the deadlift. If you use it right, it will really, it will increase your athletic performance. And I don't get why people say it won't. Look, I do get it, but I just don't agree with it, you know. As long as you're not an idiot about it and try and deadlift 800 pounds for one rep every single day or just some stupid stuff like that. If you use it for like, I don't know, like three sets of three or I'm just putting up a number at like 80% and you can move it really fast or like as fast as possible while still being fluid and all that. Why, why not use it, you know? If you're in the 80% range, it's very unlikely that you're going to get injured if you know what you're doing. If you have okay technique. Okay? So, as long as you're not bending at the back, and as long, you know, like, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just don't get a lot of these guys saying that the deadlift doesn't really transfer to athleticism. You know, like, you could say that about a whole bunch of lifts. But guess what? You kind of still need to do them, you know, because they are important and they do just because something does not transfer specifically to the sport you're doing does not mean you should just not do it. All right. All right. Because, you know, like pulling exercises, think about it, pulling exercises, if you're doing like a dumbbell row. In throwing, when do you pull back your arms? You really don't. All right? You're always extending your arm in the throw. 
All right, so why would you do pulling exercises? Well, as any competent lifting coach would know, if you do a pushing exercise, somewhere in your workout, you need to have a pulling exercise. Because if you only train this, if you only train the concentric and you never train the eccentric or the opposite load, I know that that's not really a definition. I don't know why I said concentric and eccentric there. It doesn't make any sense. My apologies there. But if if you only train the pushing and you don't train the pulling, one, you're, the pulling muscles really actually are the things that make you stronger in the pushing. All right? So, and two, you're going to be more likely to get injured. And three, your body won't be used to absorbing force. All right? Because if you only train this, you're going to have to slow down eventually. And if you don't have the muscles to let you slow down safely, then, you know, you're not going to, you're not, you're going to probably get injured really quick. All right? And you'll see a lot of stories about like people who only bench and like they hit like a plateau and then they start doing like rows and they start doing like pulling exercises and their bench like tremendously increases. All right. And I'm sure as we know, having a pretty big bench, especially for a shot putter and discus thrower, it's pretty important. All right. So I just wanted to get that off my chest. All right, so um, I hope you guys learned something. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments. Or just comment whatever, I don't really care. Um, but yeah, have a good day. I hope you guys learned something.